Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Ray. If you are new here, welcome. And uh, welcome back everyone else that has been spending time with me here on this channel. Uh, today I thought I'd answer a question that I get asked uh, frequently and that is, you know, calculating food and energy requirements and what if it's a puppy? What if it's an adult? What if it's an active dog? What does that even mean? Um, and so today I thought I would help you do that. And so there is gonna be a little bit of math involved, but I'm gonna make it super easy. And you can always use the chart. So I will link this chart um, here. You can screenshot it. And this chart is the easy way to do it. But a lot of you guys have asked me questions about how to do it manually. And I have two, um, two ways that you can do it. One way is um, using a scientific calculator. The other way is the way that I used to calculate it when I was in clinics. Back in the day when we uh, didn't have cell phones and we had uh, you know little analog calculators that we kept in our pockets and um, you know, didn't have the luxury of a cell phone to calculate resting energy requirements. So this was the way that I used to do it when I was in clinics. So today we're going to do that. Now what is the resting energy requirement? Uh, it's just that. It's the amount of energy or the calories a cat or a dog needs while they're at rest. Sleeping, hanging out on the couch, um, they're not running, they're not playing. It is the baseline um, of what an animal needs to subsist. And so it would be similar to the basal metabolic rate in humans. And so we're gonna calculate that. It is, um, these numbers have been studied, they've been determined, and so this calculation uh, is the standard on how you do that for animals. Um, and so yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Now, it is important to remember that this is just kind of a guideline. So how do you know if your dog is um, sedentary? How do you know if they're considered active? Uh, you know, what where does the cutoff? When do you use the multiplier? And so I get that question a lot. You will see on the this chart that there is a multiplier here and there's multipliers for intact dogs there's multipliers for puppies there's multiply for neutered dogs when do you use the multiplier and so this is how I think about it in my practice and how I advise people um, I tend to not use the multiplier um, the reason being is most of our pets are quite sedentary so to be considered an active dog or a working dog we're not talking about a go on a walk with mom around the park once a day or um, you know we walk to the mailbox or we do a one mile little leisurely walk at night with our glass of wine down the neighborhood you know I'm not talking about that we're talking about dogs that are working dogs that are police dogs you know they're going on you know runs dogs that are athletes they're dock diving they're bird hunting that's what we're considering active dog we're not talking about your your regular leisurely activity on you know a, a regular basis now if you're going on long you know mile runs with your dog that would be different and cats, gotta love them. I, I can't think I can't think of a single situation where I you know I, I would have a working cat. Um, yeah, so most cats are going to be sedentary, and so they're going to be at the obese prone or sedentary resting energy requirement, which is no multiplier. And so that's why you often see me referring to um, when we go over these feeding guides, shying towards the low end and not using the multiplier. The other reason is, again, it's a starting point. And so it's easier, in my opinion, to start low and add food to your dog, because most dogs and cats will be happy to get more, than to start high and find out your dog is obese and try to not only you know cut them back but also try to increase exercise and get that extra weight off so you know that's that's kind of my idea and why I don't use the multipliers but I will show you where they're at so that you can be aware of them um, and use them if you choose to uh, the other thing that I would like to say is when you're feeding a pet um, it's important to feed them or calculate the resting energy requirement for the weight that you want them to be not the weight that they are so if you have a cat that's obese and is 20 pounds you do not want to calculate the resting energy requirement requirement for a 20 pound cat. You want to calculate the resting energy requirement for their ideal weight. And so how do you know if your cat is obese or your dog is obese or thin? You need to check out my body condition score video and I will link it up here. Um, and it's also in kind of my foundationals uh, playlist. So you can check that out, but it's an easy way to go through, feel your pet, look at your pet and figure out, you know, where they are on that body condition score so that you can pick the correct resting energy requirement. So let's get into some calculations. I promise I'll make it super easy. Easy. We're going to go two methods um, and then you guys can choose which method you like. But if it's not for you, you can always just use the chart, right? 
Okay, so what is the calculation for resting energy requirement? Resting energy requirement, which we're going to abbreviate as RER, is the body weight in kilograms. So for those of you in countries that already use kilograms, it's going to be way easier for you. Um, to the 0.75 exponent times 70. And so if you do not use kilograms, or you're not familiar to kilograms, you're here in the States where you use pounds, we're going to have to convert into kilograms in order to use this equation. It's not hard to do, but you do have to do that because if you don't, you're not going to get the correct number in the end. Okay, so that's the first equation. The second equation, which is the equation that I used to do when I was a student many moons ago when we didn't have cell phones, um, actually had those little Nextel beep 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 things. My class was the first class that didn't have a pager, so... You know, I'm dating myself there, but the the easy method or the only have an analog in my you know calculator in my pocket method is the resting energy requirement is the body weight in kilograms times itself three times. So body weight, body weight, body weight, three times, um, in kilograms, square root, square root. That's it. You put it in your calculator just like that times seventy. So body weight, body weight, body weight, square root, square root times 70, and that will give you the resting energy requirement. All right, so let's do some examples here. Kilogram conversion, a kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So anytime you need to convert from pounds to kilograms, you take the amount in pounds and you divide it by 2.2 and that will give you kilograms. So let's do an example. Let's say we have a 20 pound dog. That's our favorite number. We always use that. So 20 pound dog is going to be 20 divided by 2.2 and that will give you kilograms. And so that's nine kilograms. So a 20 pound dog is the same as a nine kilogram or nine kilo dog. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the equation. Resting energy requirement is the body weight in kilograms to the 0 0.75 exponent times 70. So that's the resting energy requirement, nine kilograms to the 0 0.75 times 70. And then we need to go ahead and pull up our graphing calculator or calculator that can do exponents. Um, there's several different ones that you can pick up on, you know, on the whatever that's called, the app marketplace. Um, so, you know, go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Nine, and then you use this little button over here, which is the exponent. So to the 0 0.75 equals 5.196. Okay, stay with me here. I know that I look like I am really thinking hard, but you just simplify the equation down. So 5.19 times 70 is the resting energy requirement, which is 363. And so if you reference the chart, you will see that the resting energy requirement for a 20 pound dog is 363 kcals. So, on this side, we're gonna do the, I don't have a fancy calculator, I only have an old school analog calculator that I got, you know, 700 years ago. So the resting energy requirement is the body weight in kilograms times itself three times, square root, square root, times 70. So for this one, we're gonna pull an app that has an old school calculator that has the square root, and we're gonna use that. So nine times nine times nine, hit the square root button once, twice, and then multiply it by 70. So that's going to be 9 times 9 times 9, square root button, square root button, 5.19, you can see it's the same, times 70, which gives you 363. So there you go. You did it. You know how to do it. You are informed pet parents. You can calculate the resting energy requirement. You don't need this chart, but you can use it if you need to. And um, you can use this in conjunction with my body condition score video to help you calculate your pet's resting energy requirement so you know what to feed and if the feeding guide is appropriate. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something and I will see you in my next video.